Yes. Good evening again. I'm having a few difficulties. My computer decided to close down. So I have pulled up my cell phone. And, um, but we are here nevertheless. I want to give God thanks for his grace, his unmerited favor that given us that which we do not deserve. And I think just for that, he is worthy of all the praise and all the glory because you could imagine what it would be like if he gave us what we deserved. We would not be here tonight. So I want to thank you for joining us. Thank you, Sister Jennifer, for your opening prayer. And at this time, just before we get into our speaker, we're going to take the opportunity to welcome those of you from our districts, our district presidents. I'm going to ask Sister Jennifer if she will do that honors once again. as I am unable to look at my screen. Sister so Jennifer, do you have them with you? Yes, I'm gonna try. Um, I'm gonna ask the tech team to assist me here. Because <laughs> I'm unable to see everybody. Last night, Sister Cindy started um, alphabetically, but I'm gonna go from the bottom. I'm doing bottoms up tonight. Okay. So I'm gonna start from the Windward Islands District. So the Windward Islands District was representing the Windward Islands District. Could you identify, could you raise your hand and then the tech team, I'm gonna ask you to highlight that person, please. Anyone from Wilbur Islands? No. Tech team, did you see anyone? Not me. Um, good evening. Good evening. What are you looking for? The president or just a member from Leeward Virgin Island? Leeward Virgin Islands, a representative. Okay. I'm a, um, <laughs> I'm a no, you said Windward Canada. Islands, Sister Jennifer. Windward Islands. Okay. Sorry, it's not Leeward, it's Windward Islands. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay, while well, you're there, you're Windward. It's, not, it's, all, it's okay. Virgin I Island. believe somebody else would be there to represent, but I just thought that no one was there from our district, so that's why I came in. So oh, wait, when you no, wait, yeah, no. someone will be there to represent us. So move on, yes. Thank you. Where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the Trinidad district. <laughs> Do we have someone for Trinidad? Well, we have Sister Cindy Ann Colomoro. Welcome again. Where are the Trinis? Okay, good to have you, Sister Cindy Ann. And from the Suriname. Oh, Carol Douglas is doing the real thing. Trinidad and Tobago, land of the pan. Very good, Cheryl. And from Suriname. Do you have someone from Suriname? Hello? Yes, we have someone from Suriname. I don't see anybody, Jennifer. Oh, I heard a hello, but I didn't. Yeah, it was just the Althea. Okay. All right, this is the Leeward Virgin Islands District now. Hey, that's my district, so I see an Antiguan flag, yes. <laughs> Hi, good evening, everyone. Where's your flag, Sister Jennifer? Hello, hello, Antigua. <laughs> welcome, welcome, Antigua. Good to have you on board. And Jamaica West. Jamaica West. There's no one Jamaica West. 
Um, a blessed afternoon. I'm here, but I'm my mic is giving me some problem. Oh, okay. glad to have you. You can hear us, right? Yes, I can hear. My name is Pansy Bereef. Okay, Pansy. Yes. Welcome. It's good to have you on board with us tonight, and I pray that you will truly be blessed and have something to take back to the others. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Let okay. me throw this in right there. Sister Pansy is actually the newly elected district president for the Jamaica West District. Oh. Oh, let's hear it for Sister Pansy. <laughs> Welcome on board. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, good, Sister Pansy. Very good. You always have the, the best for the last. Oh. <laughs> and Jamaica East. Jamaica. <laughs> Sister Althea is flying her flag. Sister Althea is there. Yes, we are here. We are here. Sister Swabi. It's yeah. With us. Good to have Jamaica East on board. Give all your stuff <laughs> around with us. We're so glad to have you represented tonight. As it stands right now, our count is at 96, and we know that some persons, maybe two or three, sharing a device. So we're okay. We can say we have at least 100 persons on board. So sit back. Buckle your seat back, belts. I'm not going to say relax because this is thinking time. This is brain time because our speaker is one of those persons that will challenge us. Reverend Monty, it's good to see you on today. So, Sister Myra, it's your pleasure to introduce our speaker for this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Jennifer. It certainly is. And he's no stranger to us, especially here on the Barbados district. And I'm sure he's no stranger around our Caribbean islands. It is no other than our brother Clovis St. Romain. Uh, Clovis worships at the Beacon Light Church of the Nazarene Family Worship Center, and it's located in St. John's, Antigua. He serves as Deputy Secretary General of the Evangelical Association of the Caribbean. Clovis has a professional certification in management accounting and brings to the church a wealth of experience gained from service for over 35 years in management level positions in companies operating in Guyana, Antigua, and St. Kitts and Nevis. He has served in the private sectors of those nations in the capacities of accountant, sales manager, human resource, and admin manager, business development manager, and chief operations officer. His work in the local community has involved serving as president of JCI Antigua, a local, regional, and international NGO, as well as secretary general, vice president, and president of JCI West Indies. Clovis is also very active in the ministry of the church in Antigua, where he is a director on the board of the Antigua Barbuda Evangelical Alliance on the Caribbean field of his denomination, where he is the Discipleship Ministries Coordinator and internationally as a graduate and international faculty member of Haggai International. Clovis and his wife, Jennifer, have two adult children. When he's not busy with his other pursuits, he enjoys writing, regional and international politics, sports, fishing, tennis and listening to gospel music. Brother Clovis is our field NDI coordinator. And without any further ado, I present to you our presenter for this evening, Brother Clovis St. Romain. Thank you very much, Sister Myrel, and good evening to everybody. If you can hear me, I want you to unmute your mics for five seconds and just give yes, God a great you know, yeah. praise. Just say hallelujah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's, it's great. great to be at this third night, final night of our three day um, inaugural. Nazarene Discipleship International Conference here on the Caribbean field. And um, one of the things that, that has been with me all day today 
was actually shared by our speaker on the first night. And that was the prayer revival that's taking place at the Ashbury University in um, Wilmot in, in Kentucky. Um, Dr. Scott just mentioned that he was, in, he was in Kentucky when he spoke to us on Wednesday night. And um, I don't know if any of you has been there, but it's, I want you to consider this, that in the United States of America, a small chapel, a prayer meeting. In fact, I, I learned that, that a band had played and they said it was a multi-ethnic band. Um, and just left after they left, some of the people who were in that prayer chapel gathered. And they haven't stopped gathering eight days later. Isn't God good? Isn't God good? Isn't God good? I'm happy to be with you tonight. I want to start my presentation by asking the question. And um, I'm going to ask our tech team to assist me here because I want, I want two answers to this question. Who can share with us something that Dr. Scott Rainey shared with us from Wednesday night? Who can share with us anything that Dr. Scott Rainey shared with us from Wednesday night? Hello, are you there? Can you hear me? Okay, so there's a raised hand. Yes, Sister Patricia Dawson. Hello, good night, everyone. So night. what was impactful to me on what Dr. Rennie shared was his testimony. And if you listen to him very well, at first it sounded as though, you know, it was a story, but then you realize it was his story. It's his story. And I know that as it impacted my life, how God can heal the broken, that he is still doing that today. So that stood with me. Amen. Thank you very much, my sister. You're welcome. Yes. Important part. Yes, Sister Jillian LaRock, daughter Dominica raised her hand. Sister Jillian, good to see you. Good night. Okay. Good night. So the first night of the conference, it just brought back to mind how messy discipleship can be. Mm. And when we determine that we are going to take part in this process, to be God's hands and feet in this process, we have to be prepared for anything because we don't determine who we're going to meet, what their lives are going to be like, what their challenges are going to be like, also what resources we may have to bring forward to be able to journey with them. And the other thing is no faith to new faith to mature faith. Mm. That I take with me as well. Thank you very much, Sister Jillian. Really, really appreciate that and you're very right. Thank you very much. So great. So we had some beautiful insight into our first night. So my next question, as you imagine, would be, what do you recall from last night? Two persons, and I apologize for not showing my, um, not opening my video right now. I'm gonna open it in a while, but as you may have noticed, it's, it's giving trouble. It's been rainy and windy here in Antigua all day. So yes, we're still in the Caribbean. So insights and, or things that you remember from last evening. Do I need to volunteer two people? Um, I, I come on without the reason. Hello. Yes, so go ahead. Is that, yeah? Um, Sister I'm Kathy McCall, is it? Okay, yes, um, just a quote I think I got from um, Montessé. Um, it grace finds us where we are, where we started and precisely how we are. I wrote that down because I found that to be mm. um, something that I want to remember. Mm. 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 Grace, grace will seek us out, eh? Grace will seek us out wherever we are. Amen, thank you very much, my sister. Anybody else? We're looking for one more. One more person to just give us a little bit of insight into something that you took away from, from last evening or something that you remember from last evening. Yes, is that Sister 
the leader August out of Dominica. August, good evening. August, yes, I apologize. I didn't use my <laughs> friends. <Maybe. laughs> it's okay. Um, for me last night, you know, he spoke about, you know, sanctifying grace. You know, how the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit empowers us to live a life fully, you know, connected with God. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's it stayed with me and, you know, growing in the holiness and, you know, how to use, like, ministry to help to help develop, you know, your grace better. That's what stayed with me from last night. Very good. Very good. Very good. Thank you very much. Um, we're happy to have, and, and I think Sister Myra mentioned it, or was it Sister Jennifer? We're happy to have um, Reverend Monty with us tonight. Grateful that you could join us for another night and we really appreciate you staying with us throughout this conference. Really, really appreciate that. So the first night, we began looking at the global picture. What's happening across NDI globally? And Dr. Scott took the opportunity to, to take us on a journey, his own journey that he learned of understanding discipleship and of appreciating how much discipleship means as part of our um, mission and what we're doing across the Church of the Nazarene. And what he was also saying was when he became, when he, when he took up the position as um, NDI director, that, his, that stayed with him, that concept of discipleship and what it should represent. And so effectively, Dr. Scott has driven the, the move of the church towards a deeper, not only understanding and appreciation, but a more concrete and practical implementation of what discipleship is, what it means, and how we must live through, how we must grow this church. Yes, I remember the first time I listened to, to him present, uh, I was struck because um, the Great Commission, like we call it, didn't say go make converts. It said go make disciples. And I, and I really found it interesting. Um, converts turn away. Converts fall away. Jesus spoke the parable of the seed and we know not all seed falls on good ground. So the word doesn't always, you know, people get converted sometimes and as soon as they turn away, trouble, something snatches that word. Disciples, even biblical, disciples go, are in this for the long haul. One out of 12 is still a significantly less number than the thousands that turned away when Jesus confronted them when they were about to make him king. You remember that account. So our task is disciple making, moving our people beyond salvation, initial sanctification, and beyond even entire sanctification so that they themselves become disciple makers. It's a very interesting process. It's a process that, um, and we're gonna talk about it a little more tonight, all right? On the second night, Reverend Monty came and, and spoke to us about um, understanding the journey of grace from the point of view of how it breaks down this journey, this walk we take with Christ. It, and he linked that, I don't know if you saw that, and we appreciated that, with the resources we have so that we could be, we could help our people as they walk on that journey with Christ. I hope you took notes. I hope you, you, you appreciated um, the website. I hope I, I understand I, I had there was a point where I had to leave the meeting actually. Um, but I really hope persons have gone to that website and, and looked at some of those resources that we have available there. I said this on the first night, but I, it, it is the truth. I can say it, say it again. 
Reverend Monty has driven the creation of uh, and the accumulation, consolidation of discipleship resources in a way that no other region across the Church of the Nazarene has access. And um, French, English, Spanish, and you give him a chance, you, you work on Haitian Creole and, and all of it. So we have a gem, we have a, a, a with us um, a servant of God who truly has been, has been um, using his talents for the glory of God. I want you to appreciate, not only appreciate that, but appreciate Reverend Monty. I say that because he is, he is, he's, a, he's a very humble man. Those of you who meet him or who have met him would know that um, he don't fuss the titles and all of that. But this is Reverend Monty, servant of God. Respect him. And, and, and give him his due, please, whenever he comes through your part of the, of the woods. We're going to be talking a little bit about that too. So when we conceptualized this event, our idea was let's share across the Church of the Nazarene on the Caribbean district, the global picture. Let's ensure people understand the um, not only the global picture, but the regional picture. And then let's bring this home. Let's get to the place where we talk about, okay, having heard all that, having heard all that, how do we make this work? across the Caribbean. It brings us to something that I might call my, one of my favorite subjects, and that's planning. What is the plan that we could develop or what type of plan? Sister Jennifer Reeves, who you heard earlier, who in fact headed up our planning team for this inaugural you know, conference, um, was the one who, who, who put together the concept. And so she called tonight the blueprint. What does a plan for NDI on our field that our districts can adopt, that our churches can implement? What would something like that look like? And that's where we are tonight. That's where we want to talk about. That's where we want to go for the main part of, of tonight. I want to start that process by sharing with you that, that at the level of the, the planning team, we, we, we began, and, and there, there were five persons there, we began looking at this question. What is, where is NDI today across our districts? What does it look like? And so we went through a, I would say a mild or a, or a brief SWOT. If you, if, you, if you know the term, S-W-O-T, SWOT analysis. Uh, it's a management tool that organizations use to analyze um, their impact, their success. And very often companies use it when they're about to launch a new product. So they kind of look at their market and compare themselves. What, what, what do, where are we? vis-a-vis -vis the market that we want to drive into. Some things came up. Um, I can tell you that from my own point of view, when I look at a SWOT analysis of an organization, um, and pardon me, I'm going to be doing this in and out because as soon as my, whenever my internet or, or my, my um, feed drops and uh, video begins to slur, I will just come out for a little bit. What are our strengths? What are our weaknesses? What are opportunities? What are threats? What I was able to do was to move beyond that and to begin to interrogate something that is referred to in, in, in Christian planning circles 
as the God questions. If you've heard about it, I'd love for you to raise your hand. Have you heard about the God questions and especially the three God questions? Can I see a show of hands? I'm, I'm, I'm watching. Nobody? None? Ouch. Okay. Let me, let me then share with you. There is a school of thought within the church that has been developing a way or a method of planning that ensures that when we plan, that God is at the center of it. And so it starts, that process, that process starts by asking three questions, it's five questions really, but we focus on two, we're gonna focus on three, uh, maybe four tonight. And those questions are these. If you're writing, this is a good time. Although, the, well, no, don't write, there'll be notes. I know they're, they're, in my, they're in my PowerPoint presentation that's gonna start soon, so. Question number one is, what is God showing us? And that question comes, in other words, when, if you look out on your Judea, your Samaria, your neck of the woods, through the eyes of God, what are you seeing? What is God showing you? What is God talking to you about? What are those things that, 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 that um, wake you up in the middle of the night with, you know, worry and concern. Second question, what is God asking you to do about it? How many of you know that when God shows you a problem, he usually, the reason he brings it to you is because he wants you to do something about it. Way back in the Old Testament, Gideon found that out, Moses found that out even before that, when God brought that issue of the burning bush. And Moses went to investigate. So what is God showing you? What is he asking you to do about it? And then this third question, how will you know that you're doing what God asked you to do? If you explore those questions a little more deeply, you'll find that the, the first question, what is God showing you, gives you insight into your mission. What is your purpose? What are, what are you to do here? What, 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 does God, what does God see that he wants to change over time? The second question, kind of what is he asking you to do? Um, sorry, first question was vision, sorry. Second question is mission. What is he asking you to do? What is he asking you to set out as your, your broad, aim as an organization, as an entity, as a department, as a local NDI council. What is God asking you to do about what he's showing you? And then that third question, how will you know? How will you know? Begins to explore what success look like, looks like, what your success indicators are. What um, if you took a survey five years, five, sorry, five months, a year down the road, what are the things that you should be examining? I wanna explore these a little more deeply with you. All right, I wanna spend the next um, 15, 20 minutes or so. During this presentation, I'm going to introduce some, um, not only some concepts, but some documents that are um, available. And we're gonna talk about them later on. As a matter of fact, what will happen is that between now and global assembly, global conventions, your district NDI president and the rest of us who form what we now call the, 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 um, the field, NDI Council, we're going to be interrogating, analyzing, 
reviewing, fussing about, discussing this draft. So appreciate that everything that I will share with you in this presentation, nothing is written in stone. Everything there is in draft. But it begins to, I believe, give you an idea of where we are. At some point during this evening, we're going to pause and we're going to put you, all 117 or so of you here now, into discussion groups. And we're going to ask you to, um, to begin to, to explore that question, to review some of these questions, each of your groups, all right? Review these questions and share, add, subtract, criticize, um, you know, tell us, yeah, give us good marks, tell us where we don't believe this one is going to cut it, that kind of thing. Yeah. So here we go. I'm going to give me a minute. I'm going to start sharing my screen. Okay, can you see my screen? Can somebody shout yes if you can? Yes. Okay. Beautiful, yes. thank you. So here we are in the Caribbean, the plan, the blueprint in draft. So the three God questions, you remember I told you about those. Mm -hmm. What is God showing us? Mm -hmm. What are we to do about what he's showing us? How will we know we are doing it. we're doing what God asks us to do? So here's a list. What is God showing us? Our people, are in need. Our people are in need of a saving grace now more than ever. Our people are in danger from the impact of a secular world. And there are some big words that we could use for to describe, you know, post millennial and all of that. But yeah, I wanted to keep it a little simple. Our children are open to sexual and other forms of abuse, and this is narrowed down to the Caribbean. In other words, these that you will see here reflect what is God showing us across our Caribbean field. And all of this might not be happening or might not be prevalent in your district, but appreciate that our field stretches from French Guyana, Suriname in the South, all the way to Belize in the North or Northwest. Yes? The fourth thing, our youth are particularly vulnerable to the pull of the secular world. Fifth thing, we, this is NDI, have by and large forsaken the task of training the minds of our children. Hello, ouch. Have some more. We have not been participating in the lives of adults. In other words, we have many, in many cases, we have, we have left adults for themselves. We've kind of decided, oh, he or she is a big man, she is a big man, big woman. Let them do what they want to do. We've not, we've not been engaging our adults. Seven, we have by and large forsaken our roles as influencers of our communities and shapers of the moral fabric of our societies. 
Ouch. I think this one is closer to home. COVID-19 has had a major and significant toll on our people and our programs. Number nine, our NDI departments are struggling to gain not only significance, but standing within many of our local churches. In other words, in many of our churches, NDI is kind of relegated to the background. It's not seen as critical. And then finally, many of our ministries suffer from insufficient funding, insufficient focus. This is similar to the first to the one not number nine. But the truth is that many of our NDI departments are not doing as well as they could do. Let's move on. Let's, let's, let's push this question a little bit. Yes? Because we want to talk about this other part. What is God asking us to do about what he's showing us? God is asking us to become creative in our outreach and in our in-reach, or you can call that enrich methods. Secondly, God is asking us to forge relationships with schools and clubs and other organizations of similar mission and purpose. In other words, find places where we can interact with not people in ones or twos, but maybe people in groups and attempt to influence. God is showing us or is asking us to partner with ministries and clubs that are doing what we're doing. God is saying that those who have been converted need to be discipled, children, youth, adults, seniors. God is saying we must protect our children from predatory people, programs and power groups. I think God is asking us to win back our communities for God. God is saying to us that our programs must intentionally target that 414 age window. And those of us who've been involved in, in education and, and SDMI or NDI <clears throat> know that um, that is a significant age to sow the seeds of the gospel in the minds of our children because it's that point when they're the most receptive let me put it that way number eight we have to intentionally plan to conquer the impact of COVID-19 on our programs in other words we know COVID-19 has been a, a, gi a giant slayer um, I've said at another level, I've shared uh, something that someone shared with, with us, some with me, um, some about a year, a year ago, it was, you know, kind of in the middle of COVID might have been late 2021. Um, and the gentleman explained, and this is a, a gentleman who has been involved in the work of the church, part of the Luzanne movement and all of that. He explained that the church, the evangelical church, had been growing, has been growing in the last 20 years. The evangelical church has been growing at the greatest, at the fastest rate that the church has grown in history. In other words, over the last 20 years, if you look at the at a graph showing church growth year over year, it would have taken off. COVID-19 was the devil's response. That was his attack. Because if you think about it, not many institutions as such have been impacted the way COVID-19 has impacted the church. It was a direct, it was like a dagger to the heart of the church. No meeting, no 
touching and hugging. So no brotherly, no brotherly hug, no brotherly kiss, um, no laying of hands. Uh, preachers had to be wearing masks. And, and, and when you think about it, we were really impacted. And I know. But you know what I also know? God was not surprised by COVID-19. And so God does not and did not expect us to fold our arms and to wait. He expected us to do what we needed to do. And that's where we are. We need to intentionally and deliberately plan to conquer the impact of COVID as we move forward. Two more. We must support our NDI departments with robust marketing campaigns. In other words, at every level, we must plan better and our planning must include public relations marketing. Those are strange words to associate with NDI, but they're important. And then finally, our NDI ministries must benefit from improved resource allocations at every level. One of the things that I know happens in, um, in a particular district is that, and, and it was the practice in this district, it was, is that um, monies raised by, let's call it SDMI or Sunday school, went into the church's coffers. And at the end of every year, that money kind of went into a sinkhole. So in January of the new year, it started at $0 again. Um, that is, I wouldn't call it a word, but if money is more raised for Sunday school, it should be used on Sunday school. And that's something I want us to, to, to these, are, these are some of the things that we need to think about. How do we, using the process and programs that we have, deal with some of this? But I'm, I'm running ahead of myself. I'm still at, I'm still at um, you know, what is God asking us to do? What? is God asking us to do? Let's move on. How will we know we are succeeding at what God is showing us? What are our success indicators? What are some of them? Let's begin to talk. Our NDI department, the statistics, let, let me say this, the statistics for NDI across the Caribbean field have been trending in the wrong direction for several years now. Ouch. Let me tell you a little bit of what happens. I remember at um, Global Assembly, I think it might have been 2017, um, one of the groups that was there is the Nazarene Records um, Department. And I remember my wife and I stopping by the department. I just kind of wanted to know how, how, how they created records and that kind of stuff. And so I asked them, and I remember we got into discussions with one of the agents there and the lady said to us, you know, if we get a report that's written on the wrong form, um, and very likely it's written up now in a way that, that we can't input it. They basically just click. And last year's or the last year that they got it in the format that was good, they stick that into this year. Let me move on. <laughs> Success indicator. Journey of Grace Initiative is implemented in all our local churches. Success indicator number three. A third of annual NDI plans involve community programs, outreach programs. Success indicator number four. Our churches are actively implementing the press strategy. I told you earlier that there were some acronyms that I'm going to use that are going to require some more explaining. This is one of them. 
PRESS is an acronym um, that I used first in a, in a presentation that I made to the SDMI, it was then convention in Barbados. Um, and I can tell you that the first time I used it, I, I, I used the acronym PRES. And a certain NDI president by the name, at that time, by the name of, of Sister Jennifer um, Graves, reminded me that the word press actually has two S's. The P is for prayer or pray. Prayer, P R A Y E R. The R is for reach. The E is, to, is for evangelize. The first S is to spiritually form or, you know, get sanctify, if you can call it that, one of those. And the second S is to send out. The idea is that, that across our NDI department, we want to start this process with prayer. And then we want to reach our communities. In other words, our, our prayer will undergird everything that we do, prayer. And then we want to go out and uh, intentionally, deliberately, and using um, initiatives that are, that are innovative, we want to reach our communities, reach the, the, the boys and girls in our communities, the, the adults in our communities, the young adults. We want to reach whatever strategies we need to do, we need to do that. But we don't only want to reach them, we want to bring these people into our churches and take them through that first part of the evangelism process. In other words, get them saved, get them integrated into our churches. Move them through, here it comes, journey of grace. Yes? I hope you see it there and then get them to the place where they are now qualified to become not only disciples, but disciple makers. That's press. And, 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 and there's going to be a, um, there's a document that's, that's available. We're, we're going to be sharing it at the district president's level. And then we're going to, you know, it's going to come out. It's going to get further than that in a little bit. Yeah. So that's press. Um, actually, I believe, yes, just like I thought. My, my, my PowerPoint, <laughs> the devil is alive. My PowerPoint gave me, started giving me some trouble right at that point. And, uh, I, I didn't get much further. But let me share the, the next four strategies with you. Local churches are actively engaging the CUPS, C-U-P-S initiative. Local churches are actively engaging the CUPS initiative, C-U-P-S. C-U-P-S is a strategy that was developed by the Leeward Virgin Islands, the Antigua Zone and the Leeward Virgin Islands District for reaching children. It was developed by our children's ministries team headed by Sister Dion Gordon, who I believe is, is on tonight. Um, she did say that she would, she would be late, a bit late. Um, Friday nights are a little special for her. But CUPS is, and it stands for Churches Uncovering Precious Souls. Churches Uncovering Precious Souls. And it was a strategy that, that, that um, talked about how the church could reach young people and children, especially children. Um, ministries that you could implement. And there's a, there's a whole big write-up on, on it. Like I said, it's a, it's a document, it's available. We're gonna be sharing it at the presidential level over the next couple of weeks. 
ask them about it, remind them that they should be getting it. Number six is the district NDIs are using the million leader mandate program to drive leadership development within our churches. Leadership development is a major critical requirement across our ministries, not only NDI, across our churches at all levels. The truth is that um, leaders help us get where we cannot get alone. That's the truth. As a matter of fact, um, my own belief is that, is that leaders, by, just by developing leaders, churches are able to achieve hundreds of percents more than they would if they didn't, all right? And so the MLN strategy is available through NDI, but we have to use it not only to develop leaders within our organization or our department, but across the church. Number seven, local churches report robust growing age group ministries and those ministries targeting men and women. Now, let me explain this a little bit. When I first wrote, when I first, um, wrote this, I actually had age group and gender-based ministries. But I was reminded that the word gender is changing, is going through a metamorphosis. And so it would not help to use a word that I know next year, next month, next week might mean something else and that might open the church, might open the church to some, some questions that we may not be want to answer. The final one is that the Nazarene child protection policy is promoted and enforced across our churches and districts. I want to pause right here. Nazarene child protection policy. I wonder how many of us have heard about it. Have you? I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. At this point, we're going to stop. All right? Because one of the things that we are conscious of, we are quite aware of, is that um, this plan must involve these people. You are part of this plan. We don't want you to be a spectator. We want you to participate. All right? So what I'm going to do now, what we're going to do now, 119 people on, still a good number, um, is that we're going to divide you into five groups. Each group is going to have um, about 22 persons, 23 persons, maybe, 23 persons, five groups of 23. Yes? And we're going to ask you to explore what has just been shared with you. You know what? Um, let's do six groups. Yes. Let's do six groups of about 18, 18 to 20. Six groups of 18 to 20. Um, work with me, tech team. You do the math. Remember, we have about um, three or four of you and, and a couple of, of, of other persons. But spread it around. So, okay, six teams. I've shared with you three things in detail. The three God questions. What is God showing us? What is God asking us to do about it? And... Um, how do we know we are succeeding at what God is showing us? What is God showing us? What is God asking us to do about what he's showing us? And how will we know we are succeeding at it? This is the, 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 the kind of early part of this plan development. But I would, we would love to get your feedback. What do you think about what has been shared? 
Um, do you think it's adequate? Would you like to add some things? Would you perhaps think we should um, reconsider some things? So what we're gonna do is do, we're gonna do breakout groups. They're gonna be random. We've identified um, some persons to head up those groups. And I'm gonna say it this way. Our first choices for group leaders are, um, if they're on the call, and that would be the, that would be the decided factor, yes? The first persons for, for group leaders would be Sister Dion Gordon, current president for Leeward Virgin Islands District, Sister Kishma Edwards, Dominica District, Sister Rowan Harry, Windward Islands District, Sister Pansy Barif, and, and, and so this would be a, a, a co team with Sister Karen Clark out of Jamaica, um, Sister Anne Montrose, who's the new president of Guyana Demerara Esequibo District, and Sister Yolanda Nunes out of Belize. If those six are not available, you could choose from Sister Cindy Ann Collymore, Sister Althea Nelson Clark, or Sister Myra Rouse. Yes? So tech team, tell me if you have it. Have those people. So we're gonna go into our groups, six groups, and this is the instruction. Groups one and two will tackle the first God question. What is God showing us across the Caribbean? What is God showing us across the Caribbean? Groups two and three, sorry, groups three and four will tackle the second God question. What is God asking us to do about what he's showing us? And then group, groups five and six will tackle the third question. How will we know we are succeeding? In other words, what will be the success indicator? Okay. You have 20 minutes. 20 minutes to deliberate. I have 807. So that means um, if you leave now, do 20 minutes between getting into groups and coming back, you should all, you must all be back here by 8.30. And then we're going to talk about what you have. We're going to get reports for three minutes. Remember, each group must have a leader, one of those persons whose names I call, or if you don't find them, choose a leader from across your group, from within your group. And you must have a person who will write your decisions and then relate them to us. If you can get one person to write and another person to relate, that would be fantastic. But my own suspicion is that the person who writes might be the best person to share because they understand their handwriting best. Yeah. So that's where we are. That's what we'd like for you to do. 20 minutes and your time starts. Let me just open to, to, to a couple of questions. All right. We're going to start the breakout groups at 10 after. Is there any question? Anybody? Raise a hand, shout. We take you on. Okay, so I've, I've either been very good or I've been very bad. Okay, yes. Sister Annette. Sister Annette, yes, please. Yes, good night. Um, and Sister Peggy, you're next. Um, I missed some of the first. Um, set of statements for the first question. I think I have about three of them. No, about five of them. The first two and the last three, I think it was. So I'm not sure if you can repeat those. I have most of the others from the other questions. All right, so I'll, 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 I'll do a quick run through of the entire list before I send them. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Sister Peggy. I was wondering how would we know which group 
you're in. Are, are you going to post the? Yeah, you're thing? going to be assigned. The, the, the tech team is going to assign you to this. Okay. All right. So let me just quickly run through the uh, the, the, the three God questions. Question A: What is God showing us? And this is what we have so far. In other words, this is what um, we have come up with. We want you to examine it, critique it, add, subtract. Tell us what you think. Our people are in need of his saving grace now more than ever. In fact, what I think I could do, what might be best would be for me to possibly go back to, um, to sharing. Let me do that quickly. Right. So these are these are they. What is God showing us? Our people are in need of His saving grace now more than ever. Our people are in danger from the impact of a secular world. Our children are open to sexual and other forms of abuse. Youth are particularly vulnerable to the pull of a secular world. We have forsaken the task of training our children's minds, and we have not been particularly been participating in the lives of our adults. We have forsaken our roles as influences of our communities and societies. COVID-19 has taken a major, major toll on our people and our programs. NDI departments are struggling for significance in our churches and our NDI ministries are insufficiently funded. Let me jump quickly to what is he asking us to do? Become creative in our outreach and in reach. Forge relationships with schools, clubs, and other organizations. Join as partners with ministries that are alike in purpose. We need to be Christians. Those who have converted need to be disciples. We need to protect our children from predators. We need to win back our communities. We must, our programs must intentionally target the poor 14, 4 to 14 age window. We must plan to conquer the impact of COVID-19. We must support our NDI departments with robust marketing and, and planning. Um, marketing campaigns and plans, and our NDI ministries must benefit from improved financial resources. Success indicators, the first four are listed here. NDI stats reflect growth, at least 20%. Our Journey of Grace initiative is implemented across all churches. A third of our annual plan reflects community outreach programs and our churches are actively implementing the press strategy. Number five talks about the COPS strategy. Local churches are actively engaging in the COPS initiative. Number six, district NDIs are using the Million Leader Mandate program to develop leaders across their churches. Seven, local churches report robust growing ministries for age groups and those targeted at men and women. And then finally, our Nazarene child protection policy is promoted and enforced across our churches and districts. Those are the pieces that we have. As you go into your groups, and I apologize, I've taken up three minutes of your time. So please go. Tech team, please begin to assign or send people to their groups. So, right, nice to have you back. Welcome back to our main group. And um, just in one word, I wonder if a couple of people could describe what you went through there. Just open your mic, shout a word, and then close it back. Anybody? Educational. Nice. Thank you, Brother Ryan. Preparation. Else? Say that again, my sister, I didn't hear you. Preparation. Oh, preparation. Beautiful. Yes. Anybody else? A couple more. Adaptation. Adaptation. Thank you, Sister Julian. Fantastic. Fantastic. Progress. Sister Yolanda, thank you. Sister Nico, what was that one? Progress. Progress. Nice. Okay, beautiful. Love those, love those words. Um, 
What was that one? Way forward. Way forward. Yes. yes. And I'm saying encouraged. Encouraged. Nice. <laughs> one more. Yes. Consistency. Consistency. Very good. Yes. All of those are, are appropriate and applicable. So what we want to do quickly, and this is how we're going to try to speed up, okay, is um, we have three groups, sorry, we have six groups which explored three topics, meaning that each group or two groups was looking at one of them. Here's my question. For the first question, who wants to go first? Just go to reactions, put your hand up. Let's see which group wants to go first. For, for question one, which group? Okay, so we have Sister Myra, go, please. Sister Myra, you have three minutes. Okay, <laughs> all right. So our group uh, all agreed. I think that one of the major things God is showing us is that we need to pray. We need to put it at the forefront. Mm. We need to plan better than we have been doing before. We need to address the impact of the secular world, um, mm. the pull of social media. We're seeing it, it, it's changing the thinking of people um, within the society. And so we need to address the thinking of people so that they think biblically. Um, and we also have to look at that 40, 4 to 14 age group. We think that the race is on for the minds of these, this age group. And we need not only to reach them, but we need to make an, um, a greater effort to reach those parents of that age group as well. Um, we need to be sensitive to our youth. We need to recognize that they have emotional and physical abuses that they're facing as well. And uh, we need to remember that NDI is not just about the children. It is also about um, adults. And while we are busy in our worshiping and, and, and things like that, we are ignoring um, those major disciplines of prayer and Bible study when they're called. People are not coming out to those, even the church members. And the, finally, we, we said that God was showing us that we need to stop segregating the NYI and MI and NDI departments and focus on people rather than on programs. Thank you. Very good. Thank you very much. Very, very good. So departmental unity, I was, I'm, I'm making note. Um, thank you very much, Sister Myrel. Thanks for group one for that. We're going to allow group two, but here on, we're, we're, we're trying to save time. So group two, only share with us those things that were not said by group one. Group two. Okay. All right. We said that the computer takes up a lot of the young children's time and they hold yes. the interest a lot and mm -hmm. it's being used on a daily basis instead of the Bible. Mm. And we need to change the method of learning to engage right. the children toward Christ. And mm. teachers must also be committed and willing to present the message of truth to the children. And parents must also play a role too as well and so that they can get a better response from children in the churches as well as in the school. And we also said that the school, they pay more, the parents pay more attention to the children as they go to the secular school more than, cause they want the children to pass the exams and things like that, but instead of church, cause church is just a second to the school. So we ask that the children need to be entertained so that they can give a right, we give the right substance and grasp their intention that we as teachers we teach the children and entertain them spiritually that they were able to grasp the substance of Christ and we will gain their attention. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Unfortunately, we don't have time to, uh, the time to question the question. <laughs> Sorry, but all right, Brother Ryan, were you going there? We're not, we're not, we're not questioning the messengers. You, you can, no, I, was you just, can... I was just showing appreciation for the information I heard just now. Okay, beautiful. Thank you very much. Sister Judy, are you reporting on behalf of group three? Sorry, no, please. I think I want, I want the others is going to be doing that. I'm sorry. Okay, all right. Good so night, everyone. Of... 
Group three, sister, sister Nika, you reporting? reporting? Yes, we are reporting. Okay. Our question was, what is God asking us to do? And the group came up with these answers. Be more open to using technology, especially with the younger children, mm. using different metals to design different games and videos. And one example that we had was like the journey of grace. Also, we discussed we could use token cards as a metal of reward. Having compassionary means to reach the children like a meal program. Use sports and music to integrate the spiritual aspects. Have random open air Sunday school in the community, taking the gospel to them. Partner with schools. Having health fairs in the community or school that ministers to both the physical and spiritual needs. Using different talents that bring out our that bring out the talents in our children. And an example is like talent show or competition to bring out the gospel. And finally, we discuss intentionally tooling our people for ministry instead of keep putting square pegs in wrong holes. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Sister Onika. Um, yes, thank you very much, group three. Group four, are you there? And remember, you're yes. only sharing with us those things that group three didn't say. So if, if you if you are keeping <laughs> note, you should strike those out, only share with us the new one. Let's go. Okay, group four, good night. Um, good night. Most of our time was spent just looking at the being creative in the outreach and enrich methods, but seem to somehow incorporate most of the others. And what we looked at is that we need to have a different mindset since COVID um, mm. and find ways to reach the children. In other words, come out of, of the way that we were accustomed to, to, or we are accustomed to having things done as it relates to, to mm. Sunday school. One person said, gone are, the, gone are the days of a classroom of children because we're not seeing that today. So we might have to change the day and the time for Sunday school. Um, and we also had the, the suggestion of we might have to change the name from Sunday school because that the, the idea of school might be something that some persons might not be too, um, might not be drawing persons too much. So we might have to look at a name change as well. And also use social activities to reach persons like going to the parks, like. Um, doing walks, et cetera, so that we can reach the children. But then one suggestion was made that the church buildings need to be built for more than church services. Mm. And we, we, we got the, the example of, you know, like the buildings in the US and other areas, apart from maybe mostly the Caribbean, where we just, it was just built for we going to church and then that's it. But we need to utilize the recreational facilities. So as we build churches, um, realize that there's more than just coming for a Sunday morning or maybe a Sunday night or Bible study, we can do other things. So those were some of the suggestions that was made as relates to being, becoming creative in our um, outreach, et cetera. Okay, beautiful. Thank you very much, my sister. Can we hear from our final two groups? Good night. So I'll go first, um, Patricia. So we looked at um, the third question. So we thought that the press is very, um, it's doable, it's, it's important. And if we can get all the ministries under the NDI to get on board with press, that would be good. Also CUPS, um, and I believe you will share some more on that as you promise. Um, we also want to see persons who are ready to go and witness. Those who are discipled now will in turn disciple others. And finally, um, to engage persons, especially not only new converts, but persons who have been in church for a while to engage them, see where they're at, so that we can get them involved as well. 
Nice, very good. Thank you. And um, you were group five or six? We were five. Okay, so group six, you know the rules. You have um, three minutes and we would love if you don't repeat what you heard from group five. Thank you very much. Yes, group six. Okay, good night. So group six, you know, we spoke about, you know, the NDI stats and how it reflects on the growth. Um, most people use the example of, you know, people who come to train and, you know, the local members of the churches are not that supportive to help to go out to evangelize, to witness or to minister. So that is why, you know, they feel like we need more leadership roles taken up in the churches, you know, more leadership training. So a person can better know how to approach other people, how to bring forth, you know, that whole initiative of grace, especially for, you know, new Christians and non-Christians. Um, more, many of us were very new, so we were not sure, you know, how the press or the cops strategies were used, but we would like to know more about that very soon. Okay, that's it? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Now I'd love for you to just open the mic for one minute, one sec, well, five seconds, and share a round of applause. You want, I want you to go live, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> go live, yeah, thank you very much. Good. Um, I think we got some some ideas for stuff that we could add to to this plan as it as it develops. Um, and I'm 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 really glad that you participated in it. I, I'll tell you what has what has come to me that that, and it's this: sometime between now and June, when we expect to meet again with at, with your district presidents at um, global convention, it would be good if we could get together in an event like this and share with you the next stage of this plan. In other words, once we have taken this to the next step and for we have added um, focus areas and then shown a couple of strategies that, that districts oh, and idea. churches could implement for each of those um, focus areas. And, you know, we would tweak it a little bit, just tidy it up, nice it up so that what emerges or what would emerge would be uh, a real plan, um, a plan that has content and depth and that covers many of the questions and many of the issues that you raised that are on your mind. Really, really good. I think that's something we can do. And um, I'm committing that sometime in the next three months, we are in February, so by somewhere between April, April or so, we're gonna get circulate to you the documents we've been talking about, including press, including cups, and this um, plan in draft. I want to pause right there. Thank you all for your um, for listening and for participating tonight. I have five minutes before I hand it back to the host for the evening. And I want to use that to ask, maybe some persons were put into a group where they didn't get to, to share on something that's dear to them that another group looked at. So I want to give a couple of people just that opportunity right now to, to um, raise your hand so we know who's coming um, and share with us. Anybody? Okay, I don't see any hands. Okay, yes, there's one, but Ryan, go ahead, please. Um, yes, good evening again, everyone. And apologies as well to, I, I only realized after we came back in that there was a group leader assigned to our group because when I got, when I got in there, I was just thinking about the time and, and, and therefore I didn't realize that we had a group leader. So apologies to whoever the person was, yeah? Um, also, I want to share on behalf of my experiences as it relates to we, what we have faced in our own local church. Mm. We would have had many, we would have many ideas in terms of how to get the Sunday school, how to get the classes organized, et cetera, et cetera. But our major challenge has been getting members of our church on board of what we're doing. 
yeah? That, has been, that continues to be a challenge for us in terms of how do we make it, how do we make the membership appreciate the need to not only continue the Sunday school ministry, but to counteract what has happened in the last several years due to COVID, yeah. and not only due to COVID, due to the decline that we've seen in our churches. Yeah. Yes, so for me, that has been a major challenge. And I believe in the group that I was in, we would have made some points on that. But I think it comes down to it comes down to the to the persons as as time passes, persons just reevaluated, taking stock of who we are and recognizing that we can do more than what we're doing. It's a process, but I find that's our major, our major challenge. Getting enough manpower or as, as the expression goes, books on the ground. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Brother Ryan. Um, I think it came out there that, that, that there's no question that COVID has, has dealt the church across the world a, a major blow. Um, and, and, and we're not going to get past the COVID syndrome unless we plan intentionally, deliberately innovatively it's not going to happen by chance yes and, and so i i really encourage um ministries churches local churches and, and you know zones districts interrogate this question ask that question what can we do what can we do what can we do and and, and um press push yourselves to come up with answers because like we've also said not only did covid happen but COVID forced our, our people into technology. And now that they're into technology, they're, only, they're, they're, they're pulled by technology, not only the good, but some of the bad. And it happens to all of us. Technology is addictive. Um, if you get on your cell phone and you go on YouTube and before you know it, you're on TikTok, you could look around and realize you spent four hours. Your battery goes down to... 15% and your phone starts beeping. And that's when you realize you've been on your phone all morning. It's that bad. So thank you very much for that, brother. Yes, Reverend Payne. Reverend Payne, you need to unmute. We have exactly yes. two minutes. Um, in your first question, mm -hmm. um, you made a number of points. You say that all people are in danger from a secular world? Impact of an increasingly secular world, yes. Okay, all right. I, I would like you to add as well, or oh, people are in danger as well from a religious world as well. Huh? <laughs> I'm serious, I, very, I'm I very serious. You. I hear you, I hear you, no, I'm not laughing at you. In I, terms, I'm, I'm just in, ter yeah. in terms of religious people creating very serious conflicts, driving people into war, the mm -hmm. whole prosperity theology um, views, the people looking to get themselves, using religion to get rich, that is certainly pushing people away from God and mm -hmm. not closer to him. Yeah. So uh, that's why I'm, I'm thinking that, you know what, it may become necessary to, to say it as well, or people are in danger as well from the religious world. Yes. Well. And yeah. in very commons there, okay? Yeah. Thank you very much, my brother. God bless you. Thanks again to each of you. You've been a great class. It's been my pleasure to share with you tonight. And so um, without any other thing, I'm going to turn you over to our chair for this evening, Sister Myra. Thank you very much, Brother Clovis. Uh, very challenging and inspiring session this evening. Um, um, very thoughtful, provoking, and I'm sure that you have addressed some of the issues and the, the thoughts that other um, NDI presidents have been dealing with over the last few years. Certainly, there are things that have been crossing my mind as well. So I want to give you thanks for, for this discussion this evening. We thank God for how he's been speaking into your life so that you can challenge us so beautifully tonight, and I am sure that this challenge will 
it will not just be a time that we have gone together and discussed these things, but we want to put more meat on the bones and have a plan that we can go forward in the future. We want to take this journey as a Caribbean, and that is a plus for, our, for us uh, as a region. It is good to recognize that as NDI presidents, we are not alone. We are working together. We are able to share ideas. We're able to pray together, and we are able to move forward together. So thank you once again for this presentation this evening. At this time, I'm going to turn over to Sister Jennifer Graves, who is going to give our vote of thanks and our closing prayer. Sister Jennifer. Thank you so much, Myrell. Uh, I want to thank all of you, all of our participants for sharing with us. There's some of you who have been with us all three nights. We thank you. Just for, um, I know that there's some persons who are visiting. If you have been visiting, if you're on tonight and you're not a Nazarene, could you please raise your hand? Let's see how many visitors we have tonight. You can do that quickly. Any hands raised? No Nazarenes? Everybody here is a Nazarene tonight? Yeah, there's one hand raised at least. I'm scanning. There's one hand. There's one hand raised. Okay. This is the Rose H, I think. And I think somebody said good evening in the in the in the chat. I suspect it was a um, it was a shout out to you. Okay. Well, thank you all so much for being with us either tonight or for the entire duration of our conference. And it is our prayer that you would have been challenged and challenge to change. We also want to say thank you very much to our technical team, the people who worked so hard in the back, who we don't see, um, Angela, Claire, Juanita, and the three presenters who alternated from time to time. I just see Onika raising her hand. It's good to have you with us, Onika. Particularly, we want to give a special shout out and a thanks to our local Barbados District Superintendent, the Reverend Dr. Martel Parley, who has so graciously consented to allow us to use his personal platform. I want to do a little closing thing on mute and give Reverend Parley a round of applause. Hey, thank you, Reverend Parley. Appreciate it. God bless you. We really, really, really appreciate it because when we were looking around, some persons didn't have the capacity. So we thank you so very much, Reverend Charlie, and we thank our technical team. Our planning. Thank team. you. You're, you're welcome. Oh, I was going to ask to hear your voice. You're, you're welcome. You were thank there. You. Could you just give us greetings? Well, yeah, we, we had a three good nights. Um, I trust that as we have gone through this exercise, um, that we would see how we can appropriate it to our individual churches. Uh, we don't want to go through and then we just forget it or put the material on side, but I think that um, there are things here that we can use in the short term and of course, in the long term. That's one thing I want to add that I, well, to what was mentioned in terms of the solutions, is that I think that we Caribbean people have to start to write. Ouch. We have to start to write. And in a serious way, people don't write because they don't want to be criticized. I think that is a problem, but we have to begin to write because we have ideas. And I trust that we can, can bite the bullet, you know, um, and, and start to document our ideas. To supplement, not to replace, but supplement what we, have in her, you know, in her possession. So we thank everybody for coming out as well and we may God bless you richly. Thank you so very much, Reverend Farley. And I like that comment you made, we need to write. Not only we have the knowledge, a lot of us have a lot of experiences that we need to share with the younger generations, experiences that 
speaks about God's goodness, God's faithfulness, and God coming through for us. So I endorse that statement 100%. We need to write. Okay, we had some excellent presenters with us for the last three nights, and we want to say thanks. We went globally, we started globally, and we had our global NDI, NDI director. He presented on the first night. Then we went regionally, and we had our regional director, Reverend Montesir. He presented last night, and now tonight we went on a field level and had our very own Brother Clovis Roman. We want to thank these three gentlemen very much for their time, their patience, and putting up with me and my emails. Thank you so very much. And thank you for allowing God to use you in this way. Our planning team consists of Sister Cindy Ann, Sister Althea Nelson that you would have met, Sister Myra Rouse and Sister Krishna Edwards. Yours truly has served as the team leader of this planning committee under the, I was trying to find a, an adjective or advisor or man, mentor or I don't have the words to describe Brother Clovis Romain. It was his idea. This idea was birthed back in 2017 at General Assembly. And, you know, sometimes you want to do things and we just got to wait on God. And this, I believe, even though we thought it were challenges, we believe that this was God's thing. So Brother Clovis, we want to say thank you very much for hanging in there. Thank you for believing in us as a team, right team? Entrusting us with the things that he entrusted us with, right? Right team, support me. He was very supportive of us, all females. You that's know? right, that's right. <laughs> thank you so very much, Brother Clovis. You're very welcome, Sister And we're so privileged to have Amen. You. Reverend Monty with us. Reverend Monty is a gem. And I'm going to give him the distinct, the honor and the privilege to say a few closing remarks and dismiss us in prayer. So from me and from the team and everybody, I want to thank all of you who came tonight, who were here last night. And don't let it finish here. Let there be change. Reverend Monty, closing comments and close us off with a blessing. All right. Well, thank you, uh, Brother Clovis, and uh, for the whole team. Thanks, Sister Jennifer, for uh, the leadership for this conference. Uh, I've been hearing about it for a while, and it's great to see it come to fulfillment. And uh, I think it's uh, been a great time together. Thanks for all your time. And uh, I truly hope that uh, as we, um, if we think about what we've talked about tonight, that we can put these into practice in our local churches and our districts. Um, but thanks again to each one of you. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the incredible privilege of being your sons and daughters. Uh, we are such, we are, we are so privileged to be recipients of your grace day after day, moment by moment. And we thank you for uh, what that has done in our lives. Thank you for purpose. Thank you for fulfillment in lives. Thank you for the opportunity that you give to us to serve. Uh, we are all here tonight uh, because we are serving in one capacity or another, uh, leading your people. And we thank you for that privilege. It's an incredible responsibility and we one that we don't take lightly. I pray that you will give us wisdom on how best to move ahead with what we've heard over these last three nights. Uh, how can we take what you have placed on our hearts and uh, bring it to fulfillment so that uh, People are impacted so that our churches uh, are mobilized and your kingdom is expanded. So I pray for each one of my brothers and sisters. I pray that you will uh, work through us, work in us, and uh, we pray for your uh, provision, for your strength, and for your blessing. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.
God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Good night. Blessings, Amen. Everyone. Good night. Thank you Bye. Everybody. God bless. Bye. Good night. Bless everybody. Thank you very Good night. much. Bye. 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 Soon. Bye. God bless you. Blessings. Bye. 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 Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. God bless. God bless. God bless. Good night. And recording, please. I pass, so I turn over host to Robert Party. Wow, you need to get it back so you can end recording. <laughs>